I ain't afraid of no ghost. Only shooting stars break the Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing Vaco, Death's Doorkeeper. This is a spirit cleric that turns things into spirits and lets you recast them but it does so at the cost of a small sacrifice. With Vaco, you have to sacrifice a non-spirit creature, but this allows you to bring back another creature from your graveyard, put it into your hand and make it cost one mana, which means that this works really well with enter the battlefield abilities and on cast abilities. Yeah, you know, like the ones that the Eldrazi have and Cityscape Leveler for some reason. Because it's turning things into one ones perpetually, that means that you're going to want things that are strong enough, even if they're not as big as they would usually be. And a lot of these cards absolutely are. A lot of these cards are also designed to put more cards into the graveyard. Uh, a lot of you will probably notice that the one, two, and three drops in this deck are a lot of sacrificable creatures or protective creatures and a bunch of enchantments that produce additional tokens for us to sacrifice. I have Skrelv's Hive, Bitter Blossom, Jadar, and Lord Skitter in this deck to all produce these sacrificable tokens because those tokens are not spirits, which means if they go, can use them for that sweet sacrifice ability. I also have a couple of these self-milling cards, Stitcher's Supplier, Snarling, Gorehound, and some cards that let us discard, like Professor of Symbology, Rafine's Informant, and the Guardian of New Benalia. This one, you actually just discard, tap it to make it indestructible. There's a couple cards like that. Uh, I like this one the most. Just in case Veko gets killed on sight, we also have a couple other reanimation pieces, pieces like Cruelty of Gix and Unburial Rites, Elspeth Conquers Death. These are important cards to have just in case Vico doesn't manage to pull this, you know, complicated game plan off. But because this comes down on turn two, it's very often able to reanimate something on turn three. Even if on turn one you don't play anything, you can end up with a turn three undead butler into sacrificing the undead butler and getting out one of these creatures. Uh, I'm also experimenting with, um, instead of running just Massacre Worm, something like Perforator Crocodile is really fun to have because it can put itself in the graveyard and it gives your opponents stab wounds. So many stab wounds, what a cool card. Also, if you ever have leftover mana in this deck, which you usually won't, you can extort, which means that when you cast a spell, you can pay black or white mana to make your opponent lose a life and you gain a life. It's a, just a nice little bonus on this card. I have no idea why they decided to put it on here other than it's an Orzhov card. So we may as well do Orzhov things. So we're going to take Vico into the queue, put some cards in our graveyard and then bring them back as spirits. Xenagos, God of Rebels, doubles power and toughness. Well, actually gives plus X plus X, where X is the power that a creature has, and haste until end of turn. They're going to have to get to Xenagos and the big scary creatures, though, which means ramp. And don't worry, girl's good at ramp. Very good at ramp. Well, if they have any non-creature ramp, as for Sentinel, we'll at least tax them until we use the Esper Sentinel to sacrifice to Vaco to get out other creatures. This hand's kind of nice because we do have the Guardian of New Benalia to put something in our graveyard. And then we can use that Cityscape Leveler as a destructive force. Or this Ulamog. Okay, so this is going to be um, disgusting. Like, uh, unless they bolt Vaco here, we're, we're going to do something that's just atrocious and should not be possible in this format. So it's turn three, right? You all see that it's turn three? Great. I'm going to discard Ulamog. I'm going to use Vaco to grab that Ulamog. Oh, that will sacrifice this Esper Sentinel. And I'm going to cast for one mana Ulamog. And uh, I will exile their two lands. Because we're monsters. Unholy abominations. Look, guys, it's just a 1-1 one, one that's indestructible and exiles 20 cards off their deck. Pure evil? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to see me do it again?
I'll be able to just bounce that back into my hand in a turn. But first, let me just grab the cityscape leveler. Let's grab that. Well, I guess I should have paid the extort there. <clears throat> we're, gonna, we're gonna blast that bramble. Excel the top 20. Yeah, just a 1-1. One, one. Sometimes alchemy cards are, um, pretty heinous, huh? If you didn't see what was going to happen, Meticulous Excavation next turn, we were going to put Ulamog back into our hand and cast it again, exiling their remaining mana sources. Yep. That's what Vaco does. Giant floating eyeballs that do crime. It's Xanathar, Guild Kingpin. And this is a hand that is sort of got both colors. I'm going to keep it, but it's going to be a little bit awkward because I suspect that their hand in their deck is going to be kill spell, counter spell, counter spell, kill spell, spiel spell. Xanathar plays really nicely around that kind of hard control strategy, which is kind of bad for us. But you know what? We'll, we're going to make it work anyway. We got ourselves a butler. He's going to put stuff in the graveyard. We got give her runes in the graveyard we have an entome effect yeah it costs five mana but it does put a card of our choice into the graveyard a signet sweet bolting and bringing out vaco and attacking for one entire damage We do also have a very cute way to put a card into our graveyard using Bitter Triumph. I love that this is discard a card. Or pay three life, but the discard a card is sometimes what we want to do. All right, so commander's dead. That's fine. We'll bring him back. We'll also surveil. Parian's journal I don't think is going to be that good in this matchup, so I'm just going to throw it in the graveyard. They go back out. Also, I can tell you now, they're running blood on the snow. You can tell because of the snowlands. Okay, Scarab God. So they're going to be reanimating just as we will be reanimating. That wasn't that fun. Now, what do I think I'd want to put in my graveyard and then reanimate this turn? Like, I can put Norn in the grave and just go for it this turn. Hmm, there's nothing great that protects us from Scarab God. I know, the Elish Norn is so cute. We have Graveyard Grant, so we can literally put any creature in our deck. And since Scarab God has to be exiled to be dealt with, we're going to go for Ulamog. Ooh, Ulamog. We're going to target this, sacrifice the butler. Um, I will exile the butler from my graveyard in order to grab the Giver of Runes. We still have one mana left, so here comes the one mana Ulamog exiling Scarab God and the Dual Land. Now we have a 1-1 one, one with Indestructible. They have four mana, and I don't have to worry about Scarab God taking our creatures from Graveyard. Because that, that is genuinely like what I was worried about there. Um, was we put good cards in our Graveyard and they actually take them before we can take them. If you kill him, like if I wanted to use Noxious Gear Hulk or something similar, he would just come back next turn. They just have to play him again. Rexian Arena for more card draw. M more card draw is fine. Um, give her runes. Some Protekins. And uh, we'll swing in with all of these. If I wanted to just forcibly reanimate something that turn, I could have used Bizzard Triumph targeting my indestructible creature. Um, discarding Elish Norn, like, the Unburial Rites or something. I guess that would cost too much mana, but... Vaco, then. Vaco would work. You have five mana. I want to languish! That'll kill all my creatures! Aww. Okay. Get back in here. You playing anything? No? Okay, I'm gonna exile your Arcane Signet. I 
could also hit the arena, but I don't know. I kind of like them being able to play cards. I'm a fan of my opponents being able to play cards. Um, unburial rights. Going for the Lamia again. Putting a spicy baby into the graveyard, but which spicy baby? Shaldred. Because we have the, um, we have the unburial rights. Why does the unburial rights only cost three? Instead of four. Spells you cast in a graveyard cost one less. I forgot that she has more text. <laughs> Aww. How dare you put text on creatures? I forgot. Guardian of New Banana. Is this also getting countered? Nope, she gets to live! Ha ha! Do you want to just like play Xanathar and start stealing spells off the top of my deck? Or do you want to keep kill, counter, counter, kill, and kill and counter? I guess we'll find out now. Elishnorn grants Cenobite. If I can end the game this turn, I would like to. Tail send. All right, well, never mind. Um, I have a choice here between going for a scry. Okay, they're not giving me the choice. They're just going to kill that. I wanted to enlist versus gaining life. Sure, I attack for two. Die. Die? Okay. Seven life remain. Make it six. You narcissist. Stops me from drawing extra cards. Does cut them off from blue banana. Uh, never mind. They found more blue, and gets them some card advantage. Let me guess. Is it going to be a kill spell or a counter spell? Maybe a crime spell. Danathar is the guild kingpin. He does like to do a little crime. It's duress. Ah, oh, my bitter triumph. I don't have you discard my cards. I get to discard my cards. That's right. And look, now it's indestructible until end of turn. It's a marginally different outcome. Be gone, Narset. Swinging in for another two. Bouncing the Guardian back into hand. I will cast it again, I guess. Ta-da! And they go to five. Yep, so far it's, uh, let's see. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, look! Xanithar's coming out! Hi, Xanithar! Gonna make me discard that ravenous chupacabra before he kills you? Or are you just gonna, like, I don't know, counter it? Huh. Look at that. It resolved. Can't enlist anything. Deal two damage. They're down to two. We have two things that deal two damage. And by the way, I, I played the lander rather than holding for indestructible. Um, because I feel that it is more important that I keep playing these lands... Then like go for oh yeah they'll kill me with this and not that oh look at that see even if I was discarding stuff they would have stolen the discarded stuff. Turgrid hitting the gritty. 
Uh, I do have Ifnir Deadlands. That would give it to them and it would not kill this. So instead, Faco and a Swamp. One life remains. Hey, any of you guys deal one damage? All right, Extort deals one damage. Oh. <laughs> All right, they're going out on their own terms. They cast Infernal Grasp to lose those final two life. GG, Xanathar. Raids, a risen nightmare. At the end of your turn, you can sacrifice a permanent, and if your opponent chooses not to sacrifice a permanent that shares a type with the one you did, they lose life and you draw a card. We actually very thankfully do have a bunch of ways to make sacrificables in this stack, though I don't have any in this opening hand. Uh, I still think this is an okay hand since we have this turn one Inquisition of Kozilek. I have a way to discard. I have something to sacrifice with. I have a way to protect my commander. Lots of good pieces here. Also having three lands is pretty nice. Ooh, look at that. Now I have a card that puts things into my graveyard and a card I can sacrifice with Vago to get stuff back. Uh, so they got kill spell, value, and sacrificables. I'm going to hit the kill spell because I think I might be able to outvalue them using the entomb effect of the burning rune demon. Uh, we're going to get out Vago here. Hi. Yeah, I know. When your creatures die, though, things will happen. It will be great. Lord Skitter comes out, exiles a card from the graveyard because a rat entered the battlefield and makes some beautiful sacrifice fodder. So now I've got choices. Do I want to have protection from creatures? Do I want to just set up for the next turn? We're going to have some fun. I am going to pay three life. We're going to bring out the Guardian of New Banana. No, I don't want to pay the extort there. Uh, we are going to discard Sarah's Emissary. I'm going to sacrifice this Guardian of New Banalia. She served us well. And we are going to get protection from creatures. Lord Skitter will be able to mess up our graveyard, so we have to do everything very quickly. Ooh, the greedy free booty. Bye, Guardian of Nubanalia! Sacrifice a rat. I will just go ahead and lose some life. You draw a card, looking good, and they get value off of Xander's Wake. We actually also have Xander's Wake in this deck because it's a really good card. It's kind of silly, actually, how good it is. Uh, I will not play the Arcane Signet first for this Undead Butler, just in case it mills the creatures that we want to bring back. Did you mill a creature? You didn't mill a creature at all! You jerk! A hopeless nightmare. I'm getting rid of the booties. The reason I'm not dropping a creature there is because Lord Skitter would very easily be able to just exile it. I don't have an enchantment to sacrifice, so we lose two and they draw a card. The value continues! We got lands, we got signets. No, Vaco. We got a journal. I'm going to go to combat, swinging with these two since they are unblockable. I don't have another creature, do I? Ah, just the land. Okay. So many fine sacrificables. Um... You gonna kill the Sarah's emissary? I can only assume so based on your attacks. 
Or nope, she's still vibing. She's still vibing. We're still losing lots of life. Decline! I'm just gonna cast Burning Room Demon. Sure. Cool. Gives me a nice big scary lad here. They'll get to choose uh, one of these to go into the graveyard and one to go into my hand. Um, I do have a way to put these cards into my graveyard, but it will take an awkward sacrifice. Uh, I think that Elish Norn is a very good pick here since it would, um, well, kill all their creatures. And uh, as a second one, we could go for a threefold Thunder Hulk. It would clog up this board, Sun Titan to bring things back, or the Crocodile for a kind of similar effect. The one that goes to the graveyard is going to say, rip to Lord Skitter. The one that goes to my hand can be discarded to Tarion's journal and then brought back by sacrificing, say, the Burning Rune Demon. So they'll get to pick who goes where. And I don't have an additional mana to um, bring something back this turn. But I could take it out of my graveyard, kind of exchanging it for one of these. All right, so they're giving me the Norn. Uh, and now I have the choice of, do I want to let them exile the Burning Rune Demon to make sure I have this Crocodilly? Or am I just born to Norn? I'd rather have a uh, Crocodilly for next turn. Assuming they don't just make me uh, discard it, that would be rough. I also just have enough mana for uh, Elish Norn. It's all on you, Sarah's Emissary. Keep me protected from all their creatures, please and thank you. Oh, it's morphing time. If a creature dies, they'll draw a card. Oh, and if a non-token creature dies, they will also lose a life and draw a card. That's what that Midnight Reaper is up to. They exiled the Burning Room Demon. That is a good move. We still have big protekies. Aww, and a skeleton! No, I'll keep losing two life. Trust me, I'm having a ball here. The opponent is sending a message. Well, what's the message? Die? This might be die. Oh, hey, Jadar. Aren't you nice? Jadar. Get some extort. Crocodilly. A little bit more. Stab their creatures. A couple of them do survive this. What time is it? It's stabbing time. Hey. Listen. I know. They're also going to lose three life at the start of the turn. No Massacre Worm in this deck? No, we're running Perforator Crocodile instead of Massacre Worm. It filled up my graveyard with a lot of stab wounds. Next turn, we throw down Elish Norn. Or we reanimate her. Kind of depends on what we feel like doing. And we win the game. Maybe. I don't know. Sounds good to me. GG. Malcolm, alluring scoundrel. And oh, what a scoundrel he is. Countering your spells, discarding and drawing incredible spells, and uh, countering things, countering things. That was such a nice draw that, did you see this turn one draw of a Cavern of Souls? Beautiful. That means that what we're going to want to do is we're going to get rid of their cards that prevent our commander from doing stuff rather than counter spells. Uh, I'm also going to get down this Mox Amber while they can't counter it. 
Uh, they do have Snapcaster Mage to recast an instant or sorcery from the graveyard. They can steal some non-land permanents like this one, but you know what they can't do? They can't counter my spirits. Like Vaco, what do you mean, please restart arena? I don't want to restart arena. Thank you. Thank you so much, Magic the Gathering Arena, for forcing me to restart my client while I'm recording a video. I think it's very cool of you that you do this in the middle of the day on a Thursday. <laughs> very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, Jadar will be counterable because, you know, it's not a spirit. I don't have anything to reanimate from the graveyard here. So I'll just uh, go to combat. Swinging with my dude. Name white on our first second's crossroads. Use it for a scry. Undead butler. Yes, please. That can put things in our graveyard for next turn. Oh, yeah. Hey, I've got enough mana to extort. Okay, they washed it away, but I still get to extort them. Who knows, maybe I'll reanimate <laughs> Who knows, maybe I'll reanimate the Jadar next turn. If they just counter everything, that'll be so sad. Too bad. Here comes the butler. I am not paying the extort here. Really? Remember, I have uncounterable spirits. Okay. Um, I'm bringing back Jadar because they thought it was enough of a threat. We're going to decline on this. We can bring back the butler later if we really want to. But part of why I'm doing this is because I'll be able to use Takanuma and put more cards into the graveyard next turn. Would you, would you like to stifle an ability? Look, I sacrificed a creature for it. It's a good stifle target. Okay, so they're stifling this. Um, I could actually exile that just to bring Jadar back into hand. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? They have this counter spell. Use it. Ah, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't tap manually, so I won't be able to pay the extort. Oh, darn. Hi, Narset. Narset will stop me from drawing extra cards in a turn. And she'll also put some nice little non-creature spells into hand if they happen to hit some. I couldn't do it anyway since Jadar wasn't a spirit. You can still use this uh, for generic mana. If I had one black open from uh, Mox Amber. Hmm, crocodile, oh my, croc, croc, croc. Alright, now I have a creature that puts itself in the graveyard. So I'm just going to pop down Elspeth Conquer's Death, I think, um, to hit Narset next turn. This turn, I'm actually playing the Perforire Crocodile, I think, as a must-stop kind of creature. You know what this is? This is a 6-5. Do they have any creatures that are going to get stab wounds? Right now? No. But in the future... Oh, there will be stabbing happening. And if they, for whatever reason, would like to steal it. Listen, I get it. You're a criminal. We're all criminals here. <laughs> I could just exile it. I'll deal with it. I must stay Sadly, I can only sacrifice on my turn, so it doesn't make sense to, like, hold open a sacrifice ability. We do have other things in this deck that can sacrifice at different timing. So they tapped out. They killed Narset. R.I.P. Narset. Does Narset get the more spells? More spells? Curious obsession. Okay. I'm gonna crack open my bloodstained mire. I'm going to get the surveil land. Extra good in this deck because we like to put things in the graveyard. That's a swamp. I don't want that. Throw it away. Put it in the trash. Amy, you need to start manually tapping. It's going to keep leaving this open. It's okay. I've only list two extort. Two extort triggers.
Hello, Siren Storm Tamer. That'll be able to stop a targeting ability, such as Ulamogs. Go get him, Vico. If they have enough mana in a few turns, they could, like, snapcast her back the Invoke the Winds. Wouldn't that be cute? Dropping that sensor. And here comes Malcolm! Hi, Malcolm! Oh, they didn't make him curious. Curious. I sure hit, seem to hit a lot of Malcolms. It's probably because I'm willing to play against them. Guess who got a Jadar? But wait, are they going to stifle this? Sure looks like it. Sure. So the veteran ghoul caller, I could sacrifice to bring back Jadar. Um, I don't really see why not. I'll essentially turn this from a 2-2 into a 1-1 over a couple turns. Um, but this is totally fine. Since it gets me my Malcolm. And then we can use Malcolm's uh, zombies as more recurrable fodder. We do want to have this uh, back into play soon, though. Because it's a really helpful card to have. It makes duplicates of our cards that don't have the perpetual changes from Vaco. Yeah, I know. We're doing weird alchemy stuff here. Still not using the Curious Obsession. Oh, and instead, using the Moon Circuit Hacker. They get to scry and then draw. Normally it's just draw, but they made the card stronger for some reason. Sure, why not? Siren Storm Tamer returns to play. Ooh, Bone Shards. Let's go ahead and discard a card. A certain Lemog. Would you like to counter this? You've got a Siren Storm Tamer ready to go! Yeah, I got mana to spare. Let's sacrifice this zombie and get back a better Ulamog. A 1-1 one, one Ulamog. The only Ulamog you'll ever need. And he's uncounterable too. Thanks, Cavern of Souls. What are we exiling here? How about Malcolm and Castle Vantress? They're phasing out Malcolm, but they do lose the land. I'm still extorting you. Listen, we're Orzov. That's what we do. Yeah, like, Ulamog is not here to deal 10 damage at a time. Ulamog is here to exile 20 cards from your deck. And also 20 cards from, you know, the, the rest of the game. Gotta get rid of this Malcolm, though. He is an issue. He'll start casting things for free next turn. I... Are you... Sure? It's an on-cast ability. Thank you? I don't 
think they realized what they did. Okay, so they put Malka back in their hand. Ah, oh, perfect. Let's see. Wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so I don't have enough for Avacyn anyway. But I do have enough to bring back this ghoul caller. And I'll play that. And I'll extort my opponents. They were so worried about the exiling 20 milling out their deck that they forgot about the whole we still get to cast things. Okay, so now uh, Vico is a legitimate business person. He's doing a business. I'm going to play the land. I don't want it to use the Cavern of Souls unless it absolutely has to. So instead, I'm going to force it to use this. Green. Oh, because it's a citizen! Come on. I hate manual tapping. Flying. Indestructible. The reason I'm doing this is so now, if they do counter this, if it is not an ex exiling counter spell, we will have the potential to bring it back if I can, you know, redo this. Which I do believe in the heart of the cards. It's not a spirit, so. Let it do. I do have ways to, uh, free my boy. The Gabagool Collar. The Flow of Knowledge. Did we hit the Omni on the mill? Let me tell you. Uh, on the cards that we exiled, we hit... I think Commit to Memory uh, is a big one. This can get really big. Couple counter spells, more protective spells. Oh, hey, D Spark. Funny seeing you here. You'll draw a card. Hit a lot of islands, yeah. Um, and Malcolm learned a lesson today about bouncing um, one mana spirits back into our hand. Don't do it. Kaya, spirits, justice. I believe she makes spirits. Look at that. Her plus one makes a spirit. We also make one one spirits. She surveils, exiles cards from graveyards, and then can turn her tokens into copies of those exiled cards. It's a lot, I know. It's still pretty cool. Uh, this hand's awkward. We do have removal for Kaya, but I would rather have, like, pieces that I can actually sacrifice and do stuff with. And this will work. Ooh, somebody's putting cards in their graveyard to copy. None of them were creatures. There's a board wipe, a board wipe. Hey, wait a minute. Are you just a deck full of board wipes? Well, two of them are in the graveyard at least. That's fine. Come at me, Stitcher Supplier. Deal your one damage. I wanna like try to surveil the perfect card here. Uh oh, they're tutoring! They're tutoring! I wonder if they're gonna like graveyard hate. Just cut our entire deck off. Oh no, there's a cool creature to turn things into copies of the Frexian Obliterator. I wonder what they're tooting for. Maybe a kill spell. Maybe some exile. Maybe a card to put in their graveyard. <laughs> Maybe they tutor for the black market connections because they're brave. That's real hero stuff right there. Uh, so I can make a copy of a card in my hand, like veteran ghoul collar. Um, but that's not actually really what I want here. So I'm going to play this orb. I love this orb. This is one of my favorite ways to put cards in the graveyard. So we're going to look at the top card of our deck 
And they can choose to either put it in my hand or put it in the graveyard. They're choosing to put it in my hand. It's on burial rights. Uh, either place would have been good for it. I'm pondering my orb. It's so good for pondering. They already have Kaya to exile things from graveyard, so... Ooh, 10th District Hero. Nice. Paying lots of life there. Love to see it. Okay, Chupacabra is going to be a nice card to uh, reanimate. So I'm going to... I might just want to cast it. Yeah, let's just cast it. Ravis Chupacabra. I can't pay the extort. If they have a tithe, they could cast it. Uh, I'm going to hit the 10th District Hero before they can make it uh, into Maleva. And we're going to use the orb again. Um, throw both of those off to the bottom. I already have a land in hand. Cool. Meticulous Excavation will allow me to recast this Chupacabra. But first, I'm probably going to flock with it and then bring it back from the dead. You know, regular stuff. Unless they kill Vaco, which they might. They're down to 11 life because they are people who understand that you are supposed to pay the six. Yes, you are supposed to pay the six. Thank you for for playing the card as it's meant to be played. With great, with great chaos comes great responsibility. Uh, let's use Rafine's Informant, see what we draw. No, I don't need to extort Vaco. Vaco's like, crime, 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 crime. Not right now. Uh, I'll drop Unburial Rites. Crack open this windswept teeth. I want to pay life too. Look! I can pay life too. Do you like it? Uh, veteran ghoul caller. Yeah, enjoy your treasure. No torts. Vaco, grabbing the ravenous chupacabra, sacrificing Rufian's informant, and getting a second copy of the ravenous chupacabra, hopefully into my hand. They exiled it. Never mind. I have one mana left, so I'll play the Meticulous Excavation. This does give them sort of on-demand removal, but it costs four and requires them to exile things from Graveyard, which they can do because they milled a lot. They're exiling one of mine for one of theirs. And they're turning the shapeshifter into Lotho. Hey, Lotho! You you know how to fly now? That's, that's pretty rad, I guess. Collective brutality! Oh, no! The gain and drain! I don't have creature to sacrifice. Not yet. I'm thinking about just grabbing Rafine's informant. For some filtering. Cool, that got me a land. Uh, I am going to drop Xander's Wake. Oh, actually, I can play Xander's Wake this turn. Drop key to the archive. I don't need value pile garbage. I need fun. Don't worry, I'm paying life just like you. Oh, <gasps> yay! Card draw for both of us. Now we're both at 11 life. Besties. Not quite paying the six, just paying three here. Getting a treasure and a card draw. They're like, ah, I don't need more shapeshifters. Mm. Yeah, okay. This dying gets me the Xander's Wake trigger. Which does strike joy. Why are things happening? Oh, because they can transform it. Oh, no, they can turn it into the Obliterator. I just realized that because of how um, escape would work, 
Yeah. Oh, that's atrocious. I love it. I have to sacrifice three permanents. Yes, yes, and yes. Yeah, I forgot. So, like, I guess you could technically also hit the cling on your own cards, but the escape is what allowed them to turn their token into obliterator. I should have just blocked the ram. Nice. Do I have creatures in my graveyard? I did just the informant. That's so lame. They could turn the spirit into Maleva, pump her up, and win the game. Oh, oh, okay, you could actually do it to that. Wait, oh, you become flying no matter what? Oh yeah, except it has flying. Text. I didn't want to hold the swords to plowshares. I wanted to die. That was fun, GG Kaya. Rem Careless Stalwart Slayer, yes. Slay and increase your burn damage by one and prevent burn damage to your other creatures. I am going to keep this hand. Eventually, it has a way to put things in the graveyard. And hopefully, I'll get there. Let's bring out the Windswept Heath. Crack it open. And I don't really feel I need the Shockland. I think I could just grab the planes. So I'm just going to grab the planes and save myself some life. Oh, am I going to get the Mog in the grave? Well, we have a Blood Token. And we also have a Hope and a Dream. But until then, I'm going to sit here and protect Vaco with the Giver of Runes, while my opponent has this guy. Yeah, are you going to kill the Giver? Yeah, okay. Uh, I will protect from red. Doesn't matter. You still only have white mana up. I probably should have paid more attention. Didn't make a difference. Never punished. Die. Ooh, the Caprador! Another stop hidden yourself kind of card. I'll bring out the City Stalker Connoisseur. I don't have enough mana to tort, but I do have a myth to make you discard. And they discarded Fiery Emancipation. Yep, that's fair. Um, I'll pass the turn. So uh, this is probably going to be like just boiling their entire board with all sorts of crazy damage. Think like uh, Storm's Wrath and Burn Down the House. Ooh, Volcanic Fallout works too. A Seismic Wave. Thankfully, they can't cast both of those. I gotta land. Okay, what do, what do I think I need? Neither of you remove Indestructible. I think we go for Addison. I am going to attack in with us. Because it wouldn't make sense for them to block. Sacrifice the City Stalker Con- No! Sacrifice the City Stalker Connoisseur. I don't know why it will randomly, like, select things for me. And... Ba-boom! Perfect! We're indestructible! She's indestructible. He's indestructible. The lands are indestructible. Everything's indestructible. Except for your stuff. So, like, if you want to do some damage, you will make your Stormwild Caprador extra big, extra chunky. And there are some red spells that do um, get around indestructible. I love a big Caprador. Ah, oh, darn. It is mana, but it's tapped mana. Darn. I guess I'll go for Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Is 
This is indestructible, so... Sure, they're all indestructible. Everyone get in here! I'll exile the fiery emancipation. It's scary. This, by the way, um, only gets buffed from non-combat damage, so it's fine to attack into it. Asking if Volcanic Fallout is from Fallout? No. Next turn, we'll be able to do Burning Moon Demon. If we get a land, Elishnorn. Uh, we also have Cemetery Desecrator in case we'd like to, I don't know, remove some counters or try and kill a guy. Molten Impact. Gonna make that Caprador even bigger. Now it is a 7 9. Uh, Burning Moon Demon, I think, is going to be a pretty good cast here since it allows me to have a 6 6 flyer and also put some stuff into my graveyard. Yes, please. Uh, we are going to give them the choice between. Oh no, there's too many really good choices here. Emrakul? I just bought my shovel and snowblower. Children. When are we getting snow in Boston? Cheers to 19 months. <laughs> Thank you, Wilker Wilker, for the 19 month resub. We didn't really have winter this year in Boston. I should have probably prioritized things that would, like, put things into my graveyard. But this seems fine, too. Eventually, they'll be able to exile Avacyn. I also kind of like grabbing um, unburial rites and cards like it. So now uh, it is actually saying, hey, you know what you could do? You could sacrifice that Burning Rune Demon and maybe cast this in a turn. So I'm, I'm actually thinking I would like to do that. Despite the fact that I don't have enough mana to cast this, it still puts it into my hand. So I'll have it for the next turn. Absent, you ready to block? Ready to block? Okay, they're going through. No combat. Just the Steamkin. A perfectly sacrificable Steamkin. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll pay the extort. And instead of going for the Cemetery Desecrator, I am going to go for the Orb. I love Orb. No, I don't want lands. I want them to mill like a 10 cost creature. Huh, or put a bitter triumph into my hand. Let's me kill the Caprador or Rem Careless or. Well, that got sacrificed, so not that. It also lets me put a creature in my graveyard! Yeah, I love it! Look at this. Discard a card. I love the words discard a card. Aw, oh, little devils! If the little devils attack, they will cause problems. Do you want to make them discard or put more cards in my graveyard? Let's make them discard. Which card? This card! Fire sucking sun speaker! You know what? I appreciate what you're doing, opponent. I'm sorry it's not working out for you, but I appreciate that you did this. Uh, I am going to kill their Stormwild Caprador. Let's drop um, Elish Norn. Rab said Norn, sacrificing the Connoisseur. Make an extra copy of Norn in my hand, born to Norn. Extort, pay the one. The Whittle Babies die. They can deal three damage to my face. And it will only take a few attacks and a few sacrifices to get through this game. GG Rem Careless. Sorry, Indestructible. Kinda hoses a lot of those cards. Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty. She cascades and causes your other high cost spells, things that cost six or more to cascade too. Um, this hand is actually, I'd say better than it looks. And its worst thing is its mana. Having this come in tapped on turn three is not what we want, but we have a sacrificable, a way to put a card in our graveyard from our hand, and we have both colors of mana for Vaco. 
their hand is unlikely to have that much interaction. So it's just a matter of like, do I want to try to draw another white source, get that Vaco, because this would also get me the Surveil, or go for the guaranteed Vaco on turn two. Uh, because Emoti decks tend not to have that many counter spells and similar, because it's much better to just focus on ramp, uh, I think this will be better. Okay, so we ended up getting a Swamp here. That's fine. I can play either of these lands. And I'll swing in for one. Are you going to bounce it back into my hand? What's the word, nerd? You didn't ramp. It's turn two and you haven't ramped yet. Oh, there we go. Okay. You got more? Hmm. If I play Vaco here, they might be using um, just some kind of card to uh, re remove its abilities, like Witness Protection. Let's find out. We get a Surveil, since uh, Vaco and Snarling Gorehound are best buds. A blink of an eye. Okay, then I'm just going to put it back into my hand. That's fine, too. A uh, Plains. I will take a bit more mana, since we have some really great cards to just cast, if we don't get to do our cheeky little reanimation. See what Emoti gets. Uh, solve the equation. What are you gonna get? Extra turn spell. Cultivate at a ramp. I really would like to do the thing with my commander, but I'm also totally down with just killing Emoti here. Listen, you did let my commander do the thing. I'm not letting your commander do the thing. Yeah, your friend has to leave. Uh, Liliana said so. Shark Typhoon? Alright, bro. I'm down. I'm down. I am so down with that. Uh, Murex. Vaco. Sure, we can surveil. I like more lands. Forge Fire Automaton. <laughs> and to start, I'm actually going to put the threefold Thunder Hulk into the graveyard because it would still get reanimated by the Forge Fire Automaton. What are you discarding? Cultivate or question mark? Yeah, when it comes to uh, reanimating things that have a low power and toughness, this is going to actually come in with three plus one plus one counters and get plus three plus zero. Oh, I love it. And it's also going to make six gnomes because it's based on the power of the card. Yeah, I know. Gorehound, I, I know. Gore, Gorehound, I... Gorehound, I know! Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna drop Ulamog. We're going to go ahead and grab that Ulamog, sacrificing one of the many gnomes we've got. Cast it. I don't need to tort. We're going to exile Shark Typhoon and the Vine Glimmer Snarl. Blow them a kiss. And make them sacrifice their Palladium Mirror. Gives me a chance for a fresh attack. With our Forge Fire Automaton and the Snarling Gorehound. Pretty wicked. Thank you. And GG. Uh, I guess I'll just swing in. Everybody, Vico! Go get him! I actually think it's lethal, but oh my god. Okay, Snarling Gorehound. Yes, we get it. Fine, put it in the trash. Straight in the garbage. Put him in the garbage. Yeah, did, did I have a fog? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just keep doing this. Win the game. Nice. Thumbs up. Narset, Enlightened Master. This is the Narset that casts spells for free when she attacks, which means that usually this deck is chock full of scary spells that normally you'd have to pay a lot of mana for, but all you need to do is have them on top of your deck when Narset swings in and you're golden. 
All right, Vaco, let's do some work here. We've got our beautiful reanimator. We've got things to reanimate, though not really. I mostly just, I wanted to get him out here. If he just draws removal, that's fine. Oh, are you going to put it back into my hand? To fairy time raveler. Thanks, I hate it. Since right now I don't actually have any good targets for reanimation, I'm going to skip on the Vaco. We're just going to draw and drop. Um, putting the Perforator Crocodile in the graveyard is the most fun thing for our deck, so I'll do that. It also means for Fiend's Informant from that Connive, it's an extra plus one plus one counter. Getting the Bitter Triumph also means that I might be able to murder Teferi. Very important, murdering that Teferi. Mm hmm as well as if they had flash. Ossification, they're exiling the informant. I don't think they'll have any other creatures or planeswalkers in hand for Cruelty of Gex to hit. Uh, I think that it will be better for me to just eliminate the Teferi. I'll pay the life since I don't have anything I want to discard here. Bringing out the Vaco. We're going to try and find one of our um, just other creatures to sacrifice for this, or bring it back with Cruelty of Gex because it will kill Narset. Uh, Narset has notably two toughness, and the stab wound from the Perforator Crocodile does kill her. Kills her real good, real dead. Uh, Heaves the Koilos, Chapter 3. Die, Narset. I love the stab wound immediately coming out and going away. Nothing to reanimate. So just swing it in. Perfect crocodile attack. Path of God, my creatures are dead. And they usually have a good number of board wipes and uh, counter spells, but you don't want too many because they usually aren't what you want for free. Speaking of things you want for free, let's make them discard the highest cost spell in their hand. Thank you, Aloof Travelers. I mean, City Stalker Connoisseur. Inspired Ultimatum, sure. Uh, I'm going to play Tarion's Journal. And I'm going to use it to draw a card, trying to get a land by sacrificing this blood. Since I don't have any creatures, I'd want to be discarding. Nice, there's a creature that works from the graveyard or from hand. But it's a reanimator, so I would be like discarding it in order to get out the crocodile. So yeah, play Narset again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do it, play her. Play her. She definitely isn't gonna get hit by more crocodiles. That'd be ridiculous. How many crocodiles do you think I have? Ah, man. I like how they hit their ramp, too. Honestly, just real hater vibes. It's Vaco! It's Dunkle whatever. It's not in my graveyard. How dare you? I had a crocodile in there, and that crocodile was gonna kill your commander. Now I have to go find Elish Norn or something. Lame. I wonder what they put on top. Brainstorm is very good with Narset, since you can use it to set up the cards on top of your deck for her to get there for free. Okay, seize the spoils. Dropping memory laps. They didn't want your fancy pantsy counterspell? Okay. Key to the archive. Not Horton. Decline. Day Judgment, Time Warp, and Doom Blade. I'm gonna grab that Time Warp and drop Cityscape Leveler. And then attack you for one! Oh, okay, they made it disappear. That's fine, I can use both of them from the graveyard. <laughs> I dropped my pony. 
Sorry, I'm playing with a little Pinkie Pie down here. Look, she matches my avatar. Look at me, I'm you. I can't destroy the Narset. I could get the ossification. Wait, this could be cute. Get a little bit of Shelly Belly action. Yeah, okay. Who am I grabbing? Mm. Little the widest board possible. Get on attack destruction. I'm gonna grab the priest. This is mostly just me getting all these extort triggers. And also saying, hey kid, you wanna draw cards? I love it when you draw cards. This is my sheltered the apocalypse. Is she that good in this deck? No. Is she annoying to play against and difficult for specifically Narset decks? Yes. All right, so they got an extra turn, plus two, plus two, and indestructible. So we may as well not block because we already know what they have. Adamant will. It's free. You may as well use it. And then Alrun's Epiphany. Does not make the birds, because this is the uh, rebalanced version of the card. And then Vanquish the Hordes. Come on, bro! Stop it with the ding-dang counterspells and the board wipes! We have all three shelters in this deck. Chromatic Orrery? Sure. Got manas in it. I probably want to be blasting that. Do I just want to swing for 10? Or swing for 8 into their 10 life? Yeah. And hope they don't get anything all too useful. Um, okay, so they're trying to scry to, I think, whatever free spells they think will be best for them. And I think my best move is either destroy the orrery to prevent them from using it to draw cards, or destroying the um, ossification so I have another creature out. I'm going to go for the ossification. Virtue of Persistence is cool. I don't really need this land. So uh, I'm going to keep this, hopefully using it to reanimate next turn. So this means that I have both an ability, which will it allow me to bring back, just as an example, shouldered. I have a creature that can attack for two. It's really all about what this Narset gets for free. So Narset... What do you get for free? I hate that this is a game. I'm at 18 life. I've got cards in hand, but because she is, you know, the way she is, it doesn't really make much of a difference. All right, so Contorius is actually going to gain them more life, which gives them more turns. It's going to gain them, oh, uh, Okay, they would have gotten an extra two life. Uh, you know what? It's fine. They don't want two life. You're not discovering? Uh, sure, whatever, man. Jim, thank you for the raid! Yeah, our opponent was at two life. Now they've got Camille here who's gonna do Camille things. Thora besting the sea gods. That's going to bring them up to six. Uh, they get Elspeth for free. And we should be dead here. Uh, I don't believe there's a single move that keeps me alive. So uh, I'll go with the move that I think is funniest, which is Priest of Felrites. Sacrifice. Grab the Shelly. 
Slorp the spirit. Love a good slorp. Now quickly, before you do anything else, don't you want to draw three cards? Don't you just want to draw three cards, Narset? Don't you just want to draw three cards, Narset? Okay, yes, you're a beautiful angel. Draw three cards. No. Lightning bolt yourself. Draw three cards. <laughs> they do have the orrery. Draw three cards. Well, you know, viewers, they, uh, they didn't draw three cards. So we lost. GG. Thank you so much for watching this Brawl Stars video. I hope that you liked seeing Vico in action. I tried to include a variety of games in this video that showed how it works when it goes absolutely nuts and how it doesn't always work because it is a kind of, it is a deck that has a lot of moving pieces. You have to do a lot of different pieces of setup in order to get it to go. But when it does work, the value can be really, really high. And because it's kind of just dependent on what you feel like putting in the deck, the variety of big stuff you can have is pretty good. I would say that the um, on-cast abilities are probably the strongest abilities for Vaco, but a good enter the battlefield ability like a Shaldred is also going to be very nice. Same with these protective abilities like the Emissary or Avacyn. If you're looking for the deck, it is in the description of the video. And if you're looking to hang out, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian. That's where I play magic like every single day. So you should come on by. Also, this was a request of a deck to build. If you would like to request a deck for me to build, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, we have lots of different suggestions, like things like Feather and Goshen Tai, Ashnod, Samut, a different Samut, Koth, Tovalor, Dina, Yarek, and even an updated Alayla. There's even more than the ones I just said there. So remember, please let me know if there's a deck you'd like to see. Thank you so much for watching and have a brutal day.